views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready to thrive? It is time to take action. Hello, everyone. This is Jen, and you are listening to Thrive by Jen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. What is the result of thriving? Body confidence, mind fulfillment, and soul synchronicity. Tune in to hear about these elements and the scientifically and spiritually proven action steps to stand in confidence, love from within, be unstoppable in fulfilling your dreams, and create synchronicity so you can flow toward abundance and love. Hear real stories that will inspire you to take action today and be a catalyst for positive change in this world through creating your own Thrive Life. Let's do this. Feel empowered and ignite your soul with Thrive by Gen Radio starting now. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Monday morning. Welcome to Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. And this is Monday after our recent holiday of Thanksgiving. And when I was thinking about this show, the the topic of this show came to me from an amazing friend of mine, Donna. Uh, She had reached out to me and said, you know, can we talk about expectations on us, us having expectations of others. And I said, yeah, you know, absolutely. That's a, that's a great topic and a strong topic. And one of the things I love about Donna is when we get together, we, you know, we can talk about growth and we can talk about what we're doing as an individual to grow and to see different perspectives. You know, I, I, one of the things when I, when I talk about growth, what I mean by that is um, learning more, you know, learning, le- leading from love, focusing more on, on love, not fear-based actions. Um, for me, it has a lot to do with, with God and, and relying on scripture and living my life from a, a, a scripture perspective. And for others, you know, growing is, is challenging yourself, you know, to look at things differently, to, to see a point of view from someone else's perspective. So growth means a lot of things. And, and that's, you know, one of the things that I love about talking with my friend Donna is that we can, you know, we can challenge each other and, and look at things differently and talk about things and, and grow from that. So what was so uh, interesting was this topic really hit home because I was home for, I went home for the holidays and it meant many of us, uh, family and friends and extended family together in a room with, um, with, uh, with lots of expectations and lots of opinions. And I could go in, uh, you know, I, I went in, Knowing that, I knowing it, you can almost say like I expected people to have expectations and opinions, and I talked myself through it before I went because I, I really wanted to have an open mind and have an open heart, and you know there are things that trigger me, you know, just like things that I'm sure people say your family say to you that trigger you. And when we get triggered, we have to look at that because that's us. That's not them. So going through, let's see, it was uh, Wednesday, Thursday for four days, Wednesday through Saturday. And uh, I probably had my, you know, mini meltdown by Friday night where I couldn't, I, uh, I was triggered and I, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. So uh, I did three out of the four days where I could, you know, figure this thing that we call life out. And be surrounded by so many differing opinions about not only topics, but also about me. You know, my, my family has expectations of me and they have opinions about my life. And I go in thinking that I don't have expectations of them, but it clearly in, in this uh, scenario, I had expectations of them uh, being understanding. I had expectations of them looking at things from my perspective. I had expectations of them um, 
leading from love, coming from a, a, a place of love rather than fear. I, I expected them to let their egos go. And I also had, you know, as the weekend went on, I had opinions. I had opinions on what they were saying. I had opinions on uh, what they were not saying or what they were saying, you know, about my my viewpoints. And so it was uh, it was a great learning lesson for me. Um, and, and I wanted to share that with you here today because it just, you know, it was, it was a moment of growth and it was a moment of me taking a step back and being able to look at things uh, through their colored lenses and, and understand where they were coming from, but not necessarily, I don't have to agree, right? I, we can agree to disagree. It's when we, when we, you know, fight back, so to speak, right? When we, when somebody is coming from a very defensive posture or somebody is coming from a place of fear and then us on top, we respond from a place of fear. And that's what happened to me Friday night. It was fear against fear. And you could, you could hear it in our voices. You could hear it in our, you could see it in our stance. You could see it in our body language and you could just, you know, thoughts are, not conveyed as well as they could be. Uh, That happens to me a lot when I'm coming from a place of fear. My thoughts get a a little bit jumbled up. So these were all things that I recognized that were happening. And this time, unlike other times, because this is a muscle, right? This is just just like working out. We have this muscle that we need to exercise. And I could make a choice, right? That exercise is choices, we have choices. And so I, Friday night when I, when I was triggered enough for me to make a choice of coming from a place of fear, I was in the middle of it and knew what I was doing. And then I made a choice to stop myself. I made a choice to pull back and then come, come from a place of love. And so I want to walk everybody through today and have this conversation with you about um, letting go of expectations letting go of opinions. Uh, and this is, this is, a, this is two way. This is a two way street. This is having expectations of others as well as, uh, letting go of what people expect from you. Because uh, most times people's expectations of you, I'm not privy to them. I don't know. Right. You don't know. It's like a game that you can't play. You don't know, right? You don't know how the game is played. So like, you know, going there with my family, my family had expectations of things that I should be doing or, or ways that I should be acting or, or things that I should be saying or, or, you know, things I should be doing with my kids, but they didn't give me a list before I went. So they're speaking to me and then sharing with me opinions and judgments based on their expectations of me. And sort of the same thing happens with us is that we have these expectations that we have of other people, but we don't let them know what they are. You know, there's no discussion. So here they come in, they don't know the expectations that you just put on them. And so they can't, they, it, it's, it's, it's a no win situation. And I don't want to make this about someone winning and somebody losing. Cause then that's not what, that's not how it's supposed to be. Love, leading from love is not like that. So we can have a discussion about perspectives and viewpoints and have it in a respectful way and an understanding way and agree to disagree. So I want to dive right in and uh, we have a lot to cover and, and talk about this. So I wanted to talk about, to kick this off with expectations that we should let go of. And the first one that I came up with was other people will think true things about you and it's not true. So, you know, it it would be wonderful if if everyone just thought wonderful things about each other. This world would look a lot different. Our relationships would look a lot different. And, And to be honest with you, it would... At, at least if they thought accurate things, maybe they, they don't have to be wonderful, but even if they were accurate and 
that doesn't happen most of the time. You know, people choose their own, they choose their own thoughts. They choose, um, they choose things based on what's happening to them in their environment. They choose their thoughts based on perception of what they think the situation is. So it's just, it's like a, it's like they're making up a story, and, and we do the same thing. You know, you could, you could hear something about someone and then all of a sudden feed into that story. You can even, you know, sometimes we embellish things. We, we don't even know. We, we make these assumptions and then all of a sudden those assumptions become part of the story. So you, 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 it, I want to talk about letting go of what people think, having of, of of what other people think that may or may not be true about you. It just, it doesn't matter. People are going to think what they're going to think. And so you spending your time, uh, you bring worry into it, right? You bring a concern into it. It's again, it's that fear of feeding fear. So letting go just, you know, people will think what they think. And then same thing, vice versa with you, you you have to ask yourself is you know when you're when you're when you're talking to somebody or when you're ha- communicating when you're when you're listening a, a, to someone communicate with the other person is is this true am i understanding this correctly am i you know you said this is this what you mean rather than making up those stories catch yourself you know you can even say to yourself if you start to start to feed into oh, well, maybe she meant this or maybe, and that's what I was doing with my family. We were kind of having a heated, heated debate. And I was like, well, maybe he meant that rather than just ask him, what did you mean by that? And so I'm sitting there making up this story about what I think somebody else meant. And then I just fed it, right? That's just feeding, I like to call feeding the beast because it just takes you into a spiral of negative of negative thinking, of, of, of fear-based thinking. So, so, so let that go. And then the flip, then, then the other side of that is you don't have to be who they expect you to be. Let that go. Just like they don't have to be who you expect them to be. It, it, there's no, you know, you could expect somebody, you know, you could call up a friend and expect them to be nice and they're just not nice. This, this isn't about not communicating with them and asking them, well, what's going on, right? That's what this is about is, is saying to them, but let the expectations go and you don't have to feed into what they expect you to be based on these stories that they made up themselves. So, so letting go of, of your, you know, what people are, are thinking about you, whether it's accurate or not, and you catching yourself when you're creating a story about somebody else, as well as maybe living, you heard a story about you and then you start living what people are expecting you to be. This is about you. Put the focus back on you. We're going to take a quick short break. And when we uh, get back, we're going to dive into the second uh, expectation of what we should let go. This is Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLoose.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L. Clark Show 
where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. At 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at tracylclark.com. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to corneliastephanie.com. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do, for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Welcome back to Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. So let's dive right back into uh, expectations that we should let go of. So the next one I want to talk about is that expecting others to make the same decisions you would. And uh, it, it's just not going to happen, right? So, and, and I, I 100% did this uh, going into the holiday weekend. I, I, I work so much on on leading from love and leading from the best intentions and pouring love out into the world that I kind of think that everybody should do the same thing. And that's just wrong of me to, to have that expectation. Everyone is on their own journey and I need to be respectful of that. So whether it's on a small scale or, you know, a large scale, like a a global policy, there's, Others are going to do things that you wouldn't do and they're going to make decisions that you wouldn't do. And if you constantly are going to respond from despair and fear and outrage and and of an anger that they're not doing it the way that you would do it, right? Then, then you're that's impacting you. That's that's limiting your growth. That's limiting your development. That's your your taking away your happiness, your joy. That's putting you coming from a fear base. So we have to let go that others will make the same decisions that you would make. The other uh, another one that we need to let go of is that we can't relate to someone that we are in disagreement with. So we can agree to disagree, but that doesn't mean, you know, disagreeing with someone is maybe taking a step back and listening to their perspective, trying to understand their perspective, asking questions about why that is their perspective, rather than we kind of dig our heels in the sand and draw this line and just say, you know what? I disagree with you. Like, that's it. We're either going to, we'll, we'll fight about it. I'm going to, you know, what happened with my family is they're going to jam their ideas down someone's throat until you see it their way. Or uh, they're, they're go- we had this inflamed argument about what was happening. So, I can't relate to someone if I'm coming from that place. So re- disagreeing with them is okay. Relate, relating and disagreeing are two totally different things. I can relate to somebody I disagree with. That's communication. 
that's a way for us to continue communi- to communicate and for me to grow from their perspective. I don't even have to agree with it after I hear their whole uh, argument or whole reasoning why they feel the way that they do. I could still choose to disagree with them, but I certainly shouldn't come from a, a place of fear. And vice versa, you have to remember if if you're if you're doing this, then they're doing this too. So you could be, you could have this, you could go in there with this idea that not only do you expect them to make the decision, right? That they didn't, that, that you're making, that you would make, and then you disagree with them because they're making a different decision. They feel the same way. You're not, you're not doing it their way. They don't understand why you're doing it your way. So again, you have this like knocking, right? This headbutting against each other. So one of you, and because, and I say that this is for you because you're going to take the initiative of leading from a place of love. So then you take a step back and just be like, okay, I, 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 I want to remove the expectation of them doing it my way. What I'd like to do is learn and see it through through their eyes and, and, and see the situation, how they see it. So I can understand more, so I can grow through this. So I can maybe offer them a solution or talk them through a solution or, or even just maintain a a healthy relationship. You know, Friday night we had some in in the family, we had some, um, you know, residual leftover stuff that we needed to clear because it wasn't handled from a place of love. It was fear against fear. And we had this knocking and then all of a sudden you're backpedaling, right? You're like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that, you know? Um, and it's just, it's, there's a lot of, um, the cleanup to do. And, and so, uh, it's, it's one of those things where if we can avoid that and have that great communication going in, then it's a win-win for everybody. The other expectation is letting go is that things will always go your way. Uh, It's such a difference. You know, what I've learned through my journey and, and a lot had to do with, 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 with scripture and with God. And, and I'm, I'm just, I have so much faith in that the day turns out the way that it's supposed to. And that includes decisions that I make. These are my choices and I don't always make good choices so when I don't make that good choice in my belief, I have God who comes in, right? And all things work out for my good. So he takes the choice that, you know, that wasn't the best one to make. And then, and then behind the scenes makes it to work out for my good. But things are not always going to go your way. And when I look at my day, I even when it's rough or, or things come up that, that uh, weren't planned and, and uh, that the day doesn't seem to be <laughs> going my way, I turn it around and I look at that from a positive perspective and I get more excited about to see where this journey is going to go, to see how the day is going to shake out versus focusing on the fact that it's, it's not going my way. Because the day is not going to go, it's not going to go your way all the time. And that's a, an expectation that you'll hear some people have, like, my day never goes the way that I want it. I hear that a lot. Like, the day never works out the way that it's supposed to. Well, we go in with this expectation of that it's all, that you're always going to get your way. And I prefer, I prefer not to go in, you know, I, I, I can use the term, I expect the day to be wonderful, but my definition of wonderful in that aspect is the day works out how it's supposed to work out. So good or bad, bumps, hills, valleys, you know, sunshine, gray clouds, it's, I just look at it, I take that perspective of it's a great day no matter what. So so, uh, you know, sometimes some, some things are going to work out uh, as planned. Some days it's not going to work out as planned. But letting go of your expectations of the outcome, but for sure focusing on the outcome that I desire. I mean, I always approach the day with the outcome that I want. I'm okay, though, when it doesn't work out that way. So my belief then, my faith kicks in and says, 
this is the outcome that was supposed to happen. And so that there's that expectation of it's working out exactly for my good. And it's working out exactly the way that it's supposed to. So the, the, another expectation that, uh, that I wanted to talk to you about is, this is a big one. And I, 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 I have a, a lot of experience with this personally, but I also have a lot of experiences from, from coaching so many people through the years is that changing things on the outside will fix the problems on the inside. We kind of work from an outside. It's uh, it's sort of, I hear a lot, well, when I get a new job, th- things will be better. When I When the kids are older, things will get better. When I lose 20 pounds, I'll be happier. And so we focus from the outside in versus the inside out. And changing circumstances will magically change the inside and how we feel. You know, I always, one of my favorites is uh, in scripture, blessed is the, the man who's content in joy or sorrows. And that means a lot to me because even in, in sorrowful times, I can find true joy because the way that I feel are, is not based on my circumstances. The way that I feel is based from, from the inside out. So it's based from my heart. And same thing goes, we can take this back to people saying untrue things or believing untrue things about you. It just doesn't matter. Like it just doesn't, that's a circumstance to me. It doesn't matter. It's for me, it's what's on the inside. You know, you know, when you're really unhappy, that's not your circumstance. That's your heart. You can feel it. You can feel it. That's why people with a lot can be completely unhappy and people with a little can have this overwhelming joy, this overwhelming feeling of joy. So you can't get joy and happiness from external things. Yeah, can it make it easier? Can can it make it's a resource? Absolutely. You know, a better job, more money, a vacation, clothes, they're resources. Those are resources. You know, when I finally, when that concept for me, that was a big aha moment. And it helped me also with other people, relate to other people with expectations, is that those are things, they're resources. And, but what matters most is from the inside. And so just like with, you know, expecting somebody to act a certain way or expecting somebody to have the same opinion that I do, those are all external, external actions. And I can't control that, but I can control my response and I can work on my response and, and and the way that I respond. And so you, you know, making changes on the outside may help, but it's, um, you, those outside changes won't meet your emotional needs and your psychological needs and your spiritual needs. You're going to, you're going to leave frustrated and not fulfilled. And we talk a lot about, uh, you know, especially mind fulfillment, right? Being fulfilled. It's a, it's a belief. It's a mindset. It's a way of acting. It's a default, So, and I I don't, you know, saying, always thinking positively, I just feel like that, that phrase doesn't do it justice. I was having this conversation with somebody over the weekend where um, I, I, you know, I guess the words positive and negative, I I love the words love and fear because they're so much more powerful. Coming, you know, when you're, when you're coming from a place of love with, with someone and, and that conversation, it just puts it in a, in a more compassionate perspective, right? You could just have more compassion and have more, and then you're open to hearing their perspective um, and, 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 you're, and letting those defenses down. So we're going to take another quick short break. When we get back, we're going to talk about some more things to let go. And this is Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio.
tap into the wisdom of animals, angels, and masters with Darcy Pariso on Animal Soul Wisdom Radio. Tune in monthly as Darcy brings insights on how to better understand and deepen our relationships with animals. Working with light and pureness of ancient techniques, Darcy, healer, animal communicator, and medium is here to guide you through this process and provide inspiration to move forward. For more information about working with Darcy, visit DarcyPariso.com. Have you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk In which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. Are you your story? Or can you change your story? Can you change what you believe to be true about yourself and your circumstances as part of your healing journey? What if you were to change your expectations? What if you were to invite ease and cooperation into every day and then step back and see what happens? It might just be easier. I'm Megan Edge, and I hope that you'll join me on my new radio show, Playing on the Edge, Radical Change with Ease, with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. Want to find out more about Megan Edge? Visit her website at meganedge.ca. High Frequency Healing for an Amazing Life with Source Light Radio. Join host Laura Barton each month on Transformation Talk Radio as she explores source light integration, a unique spectrum of energy, light, and frequency. Experience instantaneous healing and amazing shifts in consciousness with Source Light Integrations Radio. For more information on Laura and her work, visit SourceLightIntegrations.com. Welcome back to Thrive by Jen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. We're going to dive back into expectations. You know, uh, one of the things that I was thinking about, and it's it's what happened to me over uh, over the weekend with family, is that you know what happens uh, sometimes with me with expectations is I expect if I'm in a good mood, right. Or if, if I'm feeling, um, just excited and excited about maybe what I'm doing or, 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 uh, very optimistic, I expect, uh, other people to feel the same. Like, you know, I I expect people to maybe when I'm telling them something that I'm working on or a new project, I expect them to get it. I expect them, I, I especially did this, I'm working on a, on a huge project right now and there's a, a, a massive amount of work that goes into it. And uh, I mean, we're, we're working on making this global. And so I'll tell somebody about it. And, 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 and to be honest with you, I, I minimize it in my explanation just because I sort of want to get to the point and share with them. I want to share a piece of what I'm working on, but to go into great detail is tough. It's, it's, it's a lot of information. And so because of the information I gave them, their response to me is, Oh, okay. That's, that's cool. Or that's good. And you know, and where I'm like, no, I'm like, you know, this is big. Like, do you get it? And so I, I, it, it, 
frustrates me or it'll annoy me or I'll start to have that defensive posture or I'll start to, you know, come from that fear base of like, you know, like, why don't, what don't they understand? Like, why aren't they as excited about this as I am? So, so that's a real life experience. That's a real life way of where these expectations start to creep in. So again, if you're coming from love, if you're leading from love, if you're, if you're, if you're excited because you're excited, you know, be excited because you're excited. You don't, don't, don't let them, uh, impact you, you know, don't, don't keep your, keep your level, keep your level of excitement. And, uh, another real life example is, um, you know, is having a conversation with somebody and they're, um, they're, they're coming from a place of, of, uh, fear and maybe they're in a bad mood or maybe things aren't going their way and you expecting them to handle it in a way that you handle it. So especially, uh, I, I, it took me a while to realize this, especially with my family, because I, I was coaching so many people on, on making changes in their life. And I just expected my family to act the same way. I just maybe maybe through me just always talking about it, uh, especially my kids, I would just expect them to know how to act away or know how to respond or know how to communicate a certain way. And, and, and then that expectation, I missed out with them on a learning moment. Because and 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 also two times when I expect somebody to know something or act a certain way because that's how I would respond, I we it it opens up that door for that fear based reaction for that fear based uh, argument and it's just you know it's it just causes a lot of uh, a lot of negativity and a lot of. Um, uh, it could cause an argument. I mean, that's that's kind of what happened to me Friday night with family. It just it caused an argument. So let's talk about now. I, I want to talk about what we do to to let go of these expectations. And uh, it's sort of in the moment identifying that you're kind of sort of like what happened to me Friday night. I could feel I could feel myself heating up. You know, I, I could feel myself really defending hard my position compared to it was with my brother. And I, I, and then my um, fear-based energy was feeding him. And so then we were just going back and forth and, and we weren't making any headway. And so in that moment, I could feel it. And so I took a step back. And I was like, okay, now I can't control him, but I can control me and I can control the way that I respond. So at that point I was like, you know what? I took a deep breath and I could just stop. Like I, I could I not talk. I didn't have to keep talking. So that's just something that you can do when you're in, um, I don't know, maybe you're, you're face to face or over the phone or you're having, an, uh, you're, you're, the discussion is getting heated because you're expecting them to see it, your perspective. They're expecting for you to see their their perspective and do it, you know, they want you to do it their way and you expect them to do it your way. And when that happens, you can pull back. You can make that choice. You can make that decision. You have an option to stop talking. Take a deep breath and just say, okay, where do I want to go with this? Let me just for a moment, and it leads into... Um, what I'm going to talk about next is changing your perspective. So you can take your perspective in that moment and just say, you know what? I want to walk in their shoes for a moment. Let me hear what they have to say. So ask questions, start asking questions rather than giving your information, giving your thoughts, giving your beliefs, Ask questions. That's a really great way I find to to sort of bring down a conversation a notch is is find out from them. You know why do you feel this way? 
what's your what are your thoughts on this? How do you see it? How do you you know share with me? You know, talk me through how you made that decision. Talk me through what you're thinking about that decision. And and leave it at that. You're you know, it's 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 one thing if even when I have friends who call me up and they're like, "Can I get your advice on something?" I don't, it's not really advice. It's just more, I, I listen to them talk and I listen to what they have to say. They know what to do and and, they, and it's their decision and, and it's, they, they are where they are in their journey. I don't know. I don't know where they are. I don't know all the background. So asking questions and just wanting to see it from their perspective is a great way to to diffuse the situation, to communicate, to then not have that defensive posture, not not to and and to walk away with, um, I feel like it's a, a sense of of gratitude and fulfillment that that you know chances are the the person reaching out to you is looking for help and. A lot of times that help is just listening. We can just listen to them and it'll, it'll, it really will help them. So another thing that we can do is, is for you to define what you want. And this is, this is big. This is, this is about communication. This is about first though, you knowing exactly what it is that will and won't work for you. Now that doesn't mean that you, you were not flexible, right? Because and, and can have a conversation and communication with somebody. But at first, if you don't know what it is you want, then when you having this expectation of somebody doing something your way and vice versa, if you don't even know what it is you want or, or uh, what you're after or what your goals are, then a lot of emotion is just going to come into the conversation. And that was sort of what happened to me personally with my family is that it was just guided by emotion. I didn't, I didn't, when I started with the conversation with my brother, I really didn't ha- go in having a want in the, in the sense that I could even just say like, I want him I want the opportunity to share my perspective with him or I want the opportunity for him to to see things from my point of view. I want us to agree to disagree. I just went in with this emotion and then it became heated because I, I didn't I didn't really have a game plan in my conversation. So defining um defining what you want, but it's in all aspects of your life. So even in, in your career, in your spiritual life, in your home and raising your children, I talk about values and I've talked about values before. And there's a great, if you go to my website, jenniferzelb.com, the, the Thrive by Jen program has a whole section on creating your values and and establishing them in your life. And that's sort of your game plan. That's part of your game plan. That's part of your North Star of you being guided to what it is that you want. So then those expect you you start to understand that what you want well, how can if if what I want is here in front of me, how can I possibly have expectations on somebody else that they want the same thing? especially when it's when it's uh, someone outside. Now, if this is your partner, your spouse, you're in a relationship, it's imperative that you have these values and these wants. So then therefore, you as a team can communicate together. So, uh, so having these wants are so important. I want to talk more about this when we come back. We're going to take a short break, uh, but I definitely want to talk about because the wants creating those values are, are so important. That's our North Star. That's our guidance system. That's a path for us to, 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 to take. So you're listening to Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? 
I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. At 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at TracyLClark.com. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Living Lighter Radio with Jason and Patricia. We have an ecosystem approach to your life. Tune in weekly every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as we, Jason and Patricia, discuss what's truly holding you back. We offer you the tools you need to reach your goals and at the same time be living lighter. For more information about Living Lighter, visit www.livinglighter.org. What is holding you back from living the life you are meant to live? Why is it vital to believe in something bigger than yourself? Are you in physical or emotional pain? Tune in monthly to Vibrant Purposeful Living. Awaken the vibrant life within you with Lou Paradise and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Lou's passion is to help everyone experience positive solutions for life. Find out more about Lou with Vibrant Purposeful Living at LouParadise.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Calling all moms, it's time to awaken your vibrant, intuitive, loving self in every area of your life. Join host Debbie Pokornik as she shares thoughts, stories, and tools to help you stand in your power. Listen to Vibrant Powerful Moms Helping Everyday Women Create Extraordinary Lives, Mondays at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. For more information about Debbie, visit EmpoweringEnergy.com. That's Empowering with letters N-R-G.com. Welcome back to Thrive by Gen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. Let's just go back quick to uh, defining what you really want because I just want to give you some more real life examples and and how you can apply this. So same thing with, um, you know, expectations creep into our life for everything, even, you know, a simple thing as how a family event should go or hanging out with your kids. I, I know that was a big thing when my kids were younger, I would expect, you know, it's funny, right? Anybody who who has a child knows what I'm talking about is you go and do these events with your kids, especially when they're, when they're younger and you have this picture in your mind of these expectations of this beautiful moment and, and things are going to be wonderful and it's all going to work out and my kids are going to have a great time. And you get to, you just spent whatever, $3,000 $3,000 on some event for your kids and they're screaming and they want to go home and they're unhappy and they're uh, sick in the corner. And, and I can remember when you're, we'd gone out, my family actually came down for Thanksgiving, which we never do. And we had Thanksgiving here and we'd gone out to this like crazy fancy restaurant and it was cr- crazy expensive. And, and the expectations were of having this amazing time and this amazing meal. And next thing I know, my kid is throwing up all over the table and and my other kids dropping like a fly because he's starting to get sick and the food's cold and people are in a bad mood. And it just ended up, you know, you can look back now and laugh, but I had this expectation of this perfect day 
And, uh, but defining what I really want, if I had gone in having a definition of, of what the outcome looked like or what I wanted the outcome to look like, I wouldn't have defined perfection. I would have defined time spent with my family. I would have defined it as, you know, making memories. And what's so funny is we still talk about that. We still talk about that Thanksgiving and it's, I I don't know, maybe 14 years later, we still talk about that Thanksgiving as just funny and remember when that happened. So uh, we made great memories, you know, and that day was anything but perfect. So defining what you really want is, is a way of, uh, it's a way for me, what I do is, is I have my outcomes and my goals based on my values, um, career-wise, family-wise, everything. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, what I really want is I want to lead with love. I want to see the best in everyone. I want to see the beauty in each day. I want to live from a place of gratitude. And those are, those are my wants. So as I go through my day, even though the day doesn't work out the, w- the way that I wanted it to or the way that I was supposed to, it really does because uh, I'm grateful that I have another day. I'm grateful for the moments that happen during the day. I'm grateful for even the bumps in the road, right? I, I mean, that's how we, we grow. That's where we get our grit from, our resilience. That's how we, you know, learn to handle uh, triumphs and tragedies and and bumps and bruises. So, so, so defining those wants and and that leads us into. I just want to go back a little bit to more about about changing your perspective. If you're in, you know, I, I I'm just going to use like the relative that you just, you know, that's very hard to speak to. That just, you know, absolutely has a viewpoint. And a perspective that just does not mesh with you at all. And, uh, but going in and changing your perspective, because, right, you can, you can control the way that you respond. You can't control somebody else. So changing your perspective of, well, here's my perspective for this conversation is, I I just want to connect with my family member. I just want to say hi. I just want them to hear my voice. I, I, I know that they're going to the, you know, a waterfall of, you know, I, like, I can give you an example of, I, you know, of a, of a family member just as a waterfall of, of negativity and uh, victimization and um, just really just, it's, it's tough to listen to. And so I had to change my perspective of like, you know what, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to be an open ear. I'm just going to be a sounding board. I'm just going to be, you know, a, 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 a family member. I'm just going to be supportive to the best that I can be. So I changed, I changed my perspective because I can't change their perspective. I, and, and especially when I'm talking to somebody who, you know, you know, my, some relatives have thought this way for 30 years, for 40 years. I can't change that. I can't, and, and it's not none of my business too. And it's not, it's not nice of me to put that on them. That's not right of me. I, I respond for me. I respond the way that I'm going to respond. And, and certainly for me to bring fear and, you know, to come from a place of fear, to meet their fear with my fear, then I'm just not, I'm certainly not focused on what I want because what I want to do is come from a, from a, from a place of love. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense the way that I said it. So, uh, it's just so, you know, letting go of those expectations opens up the door for just an amazing, amazing day, amazing life, amazing growth. Um, if you'd like to talk more about this, please reach out. We can, uh, you can reach me on Facebook at Jen Zellup. You can reach me on my, uh, my, my page, um, my website, jenniferzellup.com. You can also email me, jenniferzellup at yahoo.com. And take a look at, if you go to jenniferzellup.com, you can look at Thrive by Jen, the program. It's delivered to you online. It's easy, but there's, it'll take you through the whole Thrive program, building this foundation, getting those values is one of the steps. 
Uh, and also we talk, we, we do, we talk about expectations. So uh, I hope this was helpful to you and I could share my family adventures. Uh, until next Monday, uh, when we'll have our next show, you are listening to Thrive by Jen Radio on Transformation Talk Radio. And I will see everybody next week. Thank you for listening to Thrive by Jen Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in live each Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, as Jen shares the action steps and real stories from people throughout the country that will ignite you to stand in confidence, love from within, and be unstoppable at fulfilling your dreams. For more information, podcast downloads, and to connect with Jen, visit JenniferZellup.com.